So let me ask a, a, a general question first before we get into the specifics of your experience with aroma lot. Um, I mean, how important as a winemaker is aroma to you? Is it, a, is it a big deal or is it just sort of an afterthought? And how have, if it is important, how have you been approaching that issue historically? Yeah, good question. Um, I look at it two different ways and um, mainly how it pertains to uh, aroma, how, how it pertains to white wines and rosés and then our red wines. Because I think with red wines, you've got uh, the ability to absorb a lot of that ar aromatic potential within the structure of the wine itself. But with with our whites and rosés, there's you know it's you know uh, once it's once it's volatilized, uh, whether that's you know early on in fermentation uh, or during Asian aging, it's gone. You know it's you know that potential is just like you know, uh, it, it's, it's, there's less and less of it as the wine uh, is, is stays in the cellars. And so um, looking at Aroma Lock, you know, and I actually had, uh, I read the, I think I read the article in the Wine Business Monthly. It just, it really, the, it's a simple idea. It's a simple device, um, which I, I love simple things. I think, um, you know, trying to take complexity out of things as much as possible except for wines. I do love complexity yeah, in wine. Obviously, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but during the operation, <laughs> the pro, um, if we can take the complexity out and focus on the simple, I really like that. And I, it really was just like, wow, that is a, first of all, uh, you know, the idea, you know, when you smell the fermentation aromas, when you smell how great the winery smells during, during harvest and fermentation time, it's like, that's cool. It's a cool experience, but you're right. It's all being gone. It's lost. You know, you can't put that back in. And I actually understood that a long time ago. And um, just this idea of, hey, we're going to not allow that to happen with a very simple device and a simple way to operate it. Hey, I'm on board with that. I'm willing to try that. Yeah, let's do that. So, um, and then the fact that it is, you know, it's simple to operate you know, after you get over the, the fear of, you know, you're going to blow it up because your CO2 pressure is too high, <laughs> yeah. but it's not, <laughs> the machine works. No problem. You know, as, as designed. Yeah. After you kind of get over that, uh, you're like, wow, this is, uh, you know, there is a difference and you do, you run an experimental versus control and, and uh, you're like, this, this is more aromatic <laughs> than the control. <laughs> So it's, I like the, the really the, uh, the beauty is in the simplicity and, and uh, you know, I, I just can't speak enough about that. And, and it is so important to have those, uh, especially in a hot climate that we're in, to be able to trap and lock in any aromatic potential you can get is, is uh, utmost importance uh, for our, um, you know, for our more simple uh, aromatic white wines that we make. Uh, when you don't have that structure to be able to kind of absorb some of that aroma. So yeah, right. it's, uh, it's pretty important where we're at, I would say. Okay, thanks for that. that. That all makes perfect sense. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but, but some, of the, some of the analyses that, that we've done from, from trials that have been done by, by a couple of prestigious wine research institutions, one of them, the, the State Institute of Enology and viticulture in, in I think it's Weisbach, Germany, which is Germany's oldest wine research institution. I think it was founded in 1868. And another from the, the Cool Climate Enology and Viticulture Institute at Brock University uh, in Canada, uh, both showed that not only do desirable aromas uh, stay in the wine during fermentation, but for example, one set of analyses that we just got back showed that in a, uh, I believe it was a Pinot Gris, 2019 Pinot Gris, um, 14 months after bottling, the same analyses were showing up when we tested the ingredients of that bottle, which shows that the technology doesn't just help during fermentation, because of course, you, you, as you pointed out in your comment, you start losing aromas in every step after fermentation too. Mm -hmm. And when you're using aroma lock, that's not the case, which is, is pretty cool. We also, I, I will say, I'm harking back on what you said about reds. We, we had a, 
we had a, a, a really excellent uh, winery in Napa Valley, Alpha Omega. I don't know if you're familiar with Alpha Omega, but mm -hmm. uh, they, they did some, some trials with, uh, with Roma Lock on a Cab Sav. And we, we did a, a blind tasting uh, of that, that particular wine uh, against control. So there were, there were three samples. One was the control. One was uh, using aroma lock for X amount of time during fermentation. The other was using aroma lock Y amount of time during fermentation. And then the blind tasting, I mean, first of all, the control wine was excellent. I mean, they make really, really nice cab salves at Alpha <laughs> Omega, right? Um, yep. The, the second wine uh, had, had more structure, more character. It was just more of a go already good thing. And the third was, was almost unrecognizably bigger because it had, it had actually allowed the wine to capture more of the oak and, and it had stuck with the wine. And I mean, the taster who was a winemaker, head winemaker like you, was just like, oh my God, this is, it's almost like another wine. It's almost like a different wine. It's that much bigger and bolder, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So, so Jason, in closing, uh, what, if anything, would, uh, if, if I was asking you to do, uh, to do a testimonial to your fellow winemakers uh, and say whatever you might say, good, bad, or indifferent, about aroma lock, what would it be? Well, first off, it works. Um, I mean, just doing a pure organoleptic evaluation uh, of the same wine fermented with the aroma lock and without, there, there is a noticeable difference. You can tell it works. It's capturing that aroma. Um, the second thing is that you can use it on multiple batches without, throughout one season. We have a long uh, harvest period in Texas because we grow so many different types of grapes and different ripening uh you know time frames is that you can use it on multiple tanks so it's not like it's locked into one particular tank the entire time so all of a sudden that price tag is just spread between up to five tanks uh, depending on you know uh, the, the uh, varieties that you harvest so um yeah to be able to utilize a piece of equipment across uh you know a pretty broad spectrum of of, of wine types including reds if, you know, and, it, and it's not too difficult of a situation to do it in the reds, you just have to have a smaller uh, tank size. Um, yeah, there's a potential impact uh, uh, across uh, a lot of different wines. And um, I, I've been impressed, put it that way, especially with the simplicity and the design and the fact that it works. <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful combination, right? In, in, in <laughs> yeah. wine, in aromatics and in life itself. <laughs> Cheers okay. to that. <laughs> 